Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Mark Eskenazi with ME Coral. Today I'd like to take an opportunity to share with you a little bit about the ME Coral Mi Aminos. A lot of people have been talking about it, mainly because it's recently been introduced a few weeks ago and a lot of people are using it. And I wanted to explain what makes ME Coral different, why we need aminos, what we should do and what's going on. Well, the first thing I want to start with is some people claim it's magically delicious you can take a wand, stroke it, and it's going to make everything in your tank magically beautiful. Let me start by saying that's not what it is, and don't ever believe anybody that tells you they have anything that will do that for your tank. So, this has a place, like everything else we use in our aquarium, it's a tool. This is not something everybody should go out and buy and pour in their tank and think in their tank is going to revolutionarily get beautiful. It may happen to some people. Let's discuss who it might happen to and who would get the best benefit out of amino acids. First of all, I want to start with a basic understanding of something called the red field ratio. The red field ratio basically says that everything in the ocean, whether it's algae, carbon, coral, bacteria, all consume and are made up of carbon, nitrate, and phosphate. Well, what are we talking about? Well, Mr. 1938 Redfield said that maybe I think the number was 106 carbon to 16 or 17 on the nitrate to one phosphate is what algae consume from the water column. It's what our bacteria consume from the water column. And again, it's what our corals consume from the water column. Mark, why is that important to me? First, and most importantly, is if one of those three things become deficient in your tank, and deficient might not be the right word. I think the scientists use the word the limiting nutrient, or it's limited. Uh, but the point is, if one of those three go to zero, your corals can't grow, your algaes can't grow, your bacteria can't grow. They may stay alive, they may not die, but they can't grow and they can't get the coloration that we want. So Mark, what are you talking about? What's that mean to me? Let's talk corals for a minute. Corals can get this vast amounts of carbon, let's call it 105, and by the way, the Redfield ratio has been challenged many times. Is it really 105? Maybe it's 120. If the number's not 17, maybe it's 20. The whole point I'm trying to address to you here is Corals need more nit nitrate or nitrogen or nitrite or ammonia, all the same thing. They need more of that than they need phosphates. And they need carbon, but I'm not worried about carbon because all of you buy quality lights. And we've all put some of the best lightings on our system, and corals are going to get their lights from carbon. Now, let's back up. The bacteria in your tank is not going to get carbon from the sunlight. And hence, there's the methodology behind why we need to add a source of carbon to carbon dose. But we're not going to get into that right now. Let's get back to amino. So what's happening in your tank, Mark? I got plenty of carbon, you just told me. Yep, your sunlight, I'm not worried about carbon. Let's talk about nitrates and phosphates. In our systems, we've all learned that we need to bring our phosphates down to the lowest level possible, close to natural seawater as we can. Let's put a number to it, 0.02 to 0.05, but the lower the better. Well, if the red field ratio is right, our corals have consumed, and our bacteria and our algae in our tank have consumed 17 or 20 times as much nitrogen from our tank as they have phosphates. So what I'm getting at is we're trying to push phosphates down, and our nitrates become a limiting factor. We end up taking nitrates to below 1 or something that's 0 0.0 something. But our phosphate might still be 0.05, and we want it lower. We can't lower it anymore because our nitrates are limited. Our corals can't grow. They'll stay alive and they'll be okay. Our, most importantly, our bacteria in our tank are not going to grow, hence we won't be able to reduce our phosphates naturally. So what's the answer? Well, we need to add an amino acid product, which is the purest, cleanest form of protein that you can deliver to a coral and to your bacteria. So we're following along. We're adding a nitrate source to a tank. Let's talk a little bit further of, of who needs this. Well, the other day I got a, an email from somebody that said to me they got a fish-only tank. And in their fish-only tank, they feed four times a day. I said, what's your nitrate and your phosphates? And they said, oh, they're real high. And my answer to them was, please do not put amino acids in your tank. Your tank is overfed. Overpolluted for an SPS tank, but overfed, and it's a pretty fish tank. And that's the difference we need to understand where it's not magically delicious in any kind of tank like that. Now, let's go back to that SPS tank who's fought very hard to lower its phosphates. And phosphates are now 0.04, but nitrates are below 1. That's the scenario where adding a nitrate source is going to see automatic blossom in your tank, and it might just be magically delicious. Your corals will show coloration growth and growth by adding a pure amino acid. So follow along. 
it's all based upon nitrates. Now, remember what nitrates are. Nitrates are what they need to build protein. Proteins are basically amino acids. We're 90% of the way there at a protein. This can get absorbed into the skin of a coral. Not the rock of the coral, not the calcium carbonate, but the skin of the coral, or what's called the organic matrix, or the zoanthaline, or the symbion, whatever name you want to call it, but we've all killed a coral where we've seen the skin come off. That skin is really what is glowing in our tank when we want a pretty coral. How do we make it glow? Reduce your phosphates to 0 0.02, 0 0.03, and your corals will look prettier. But if I reduce it to 0 0.03, mark my nitrates are going to zero. Correct. If they go to zero, all you need to do is add any coral amino acid, and your nitrates are going to rise. Your corals are going to blossom and grow faster because they're not nitrate limited. So we're following along, but it's, it raises a lot of questions. Let's move along. That kind of talked a little bit about who needs amino acids. Somebody said to me, well, how often should I do it? Well, on the bottle, on the label, I put down you should do it every other day. That's random. It's random. I wanted to do that so you could see a difference between days. But more importantly, it's really based on where your nitrate level is, meaning if you're still at zero and you're dosing daily instead of every other day, keep dosing and dose more. If you dose every other day and your nitrates start to rise, don't dose as much, go to every three days. So there's no right dose. The dose must be custom tailored to your tank and it's you through your nitrate test kit, nitrate test kit to determine what's the appropriate dose for you. So follow with that because a lot of people say, oh, I followed your instructions on the bottle. Yeah, but your tank was so clean and so stripped of nitrates, you could be doing a double dose on a daily basis and your tank would absorb it and your corals will feed on it and do better. One thing I must stress, corals feed aggressively. Corals will feed as much as you feed them. It's not like us where we get filled. They will eat it. If they don't need it, they will release it or pass it along to the calcium carbonate structure. So the game here is to reduce your nutrients to as low a possible level and then feed aggressively. We want a super clean tank that we feed the most. So high nutrient in, but high nutrient out. And there's the secret to a good SPS tank with an amino acid. But let's go on. There's more questions that have been asked to me of, of this any coral amino acid. Uh, how about the time of the day, Mark? Should I do it at day or night? And, and here's no right answer, but corals have been known to feed more at night. That is, SPS corals will feed more at night. Why? Because there's so more zooplankton around at night all over the reef. There's more dissolved organic material in the reef. The coral polyps will come out more at night to feed. So it's more natural for a coral to feed at night. But corals are trainable, just like my dog or anybody else. And if you decide that you've been feeding your whole life in the morning and you want to feed in the morning, your corals will learn to adapt and will learn to eat in the morning. Is it the best for them? Not necessarily. It might not be the most energy efficient. That is, it's more energy efficient if the coral during the day is getting sunlight to make its carbon and at night when there's no sun, it uses its energy to make, to absorb nitrates and phosphates from the water. But it doesn't matter when you do it. Somebody says to me, Mark, I love setting it up on a doser to let it go. And that's a great idea. But before you set it on a doser, you need to kind of find your equilibrium level of how much amino acid you need to be adding to your tank. Once you determine, hey, I'm on a daily dose of 15 mils a day for my 100 gallon tank, whatever the size is, then you can incorporate it into a dosing system. Personally, I dose it that way. But I've, I've been dosing vinegar for many years as a carbon source because our bacteria need carbon to grow and to reduce nitrate and phosphates. Okay, but I've added my amino acids to my vinegar because vinegar is a good preservative for the, uh, the amino acids. And I'm now dosing them together. You can dose them separately. You can dose them together. I actually tell people initially for the first month or two, dose it manually so that 15, 20 minutes after you dose this product in a low nutrient tank, you will see polyp extension that you have never seen in your tank especially by the time you get to the third or the fourth day. That's the key. And when I'll go back to say the Lepre Leprechaun with his magical wand, it could be this product if you have a system that has nitrates at what I'll call almost undetectable levels. If you have a system that is full of nutrients polluted for an SPS term, this is not the magical wand for you. You're pissing your money away, excuse me, and I don't want to take it. This was designed to be used in the right place. Now, other questions that have come up. Mark, I smell vinegar in this. Am I dosing a carbon source? I don't want a carbon source. For whatever reason you think you don't want a carbon source, you may need a carbon source. We can talk about that another day. But the answer really is, is the amount of vinegar that's in here, or let's put the numbers more specific. The tank you see behind me, I dose about 75 mils of vinegar a day. If I were to dose the recommended dose of the ME aminos, 
um, I'm not sure what the number is, but the, the contributor of, of vinegar that went along with it would probably only be about five or 10 mils. Hence, it's a negligible source of carbon. And I'm of the opinion that most tanks are carbon starved for your bacteria. So you're probably doing a good thing having some vinegar and possibly even diluting it and adding it with your vinegar, with this product, adding it to your vinegar, set it up on a dosing pump, and you now could be doing a carbon dose and a nitrate dose together. It's what I do. Not recommending it for you. Everybody needs to do their own thing for their system. Hey, should I turn off my skimmer mark? You know, I'm lazy. I don't. But the truth is, if you turn off your skimmer, the protein will be in the water longer. I mean, let's phrase it. If I put it at 10 o'clock at night, it might still be there the next morning if I turn off my skimmer. But I don't want to turn off my skimmer at night. I want it to pull my protein. So it's a personal choice. Knowing that by putting it in, you're pulling it out of the water quicker. So does that mean you double dose? I don't. That's up to you based upon your nitrate level. That's why it's all custom tailored and there is no specific dose. What else? I'm looking at my notes. The last thing I want to talk about is why ME amino versus any other amino on the market out there. And I'd like to share with you why I formulated mine differently. A lot of amino products that are on the market are not a pure amino product. They're an all-in-one product. They try to give you other good things, or so they claim good things. You get vitamins, you get uh, maybe another phosphate source, you get some trace metals. I don't know which trace metals, but you can read the list of ingredients on people's bottles, and that's key. If you read my label, it's going to say pharmaceutical grade, or USP, aspartic and glutomic acid. Simple as it is, I'm here to tell you what's in my product. It's only two amino acids. They happen to be the two most important ones, and there's research to show that all the smaller amino acids that corals can consume can be synthesized from these two main amino acids. All right? Now, Mark, there's other products that claim they're pure amino acids. The next thing I'd look at would be the dosage rate. Emmy Coral says use five, maybe six mils per 100 gallons. Well, if you read another one and it says use 25 mils per 100 gallons, well, it's obvious to say this is probably five times stronger and that has five times as much water. Uh, marketing that I've done on this product is I could make this half the size and have you just vinegar it down, but I'm seeing that the market seems to want a bigger bottle, a 16-ounce bottle, a 32-ounce bottle. It just seems to be the American size fits my hand. Uh, we will be coming out with something to satisfy that need uh, and probably keep the strength at this level, so it will be significantly stronger than what you're used to out there. Um, with that, I think about the last couple questions that have been out there. Again, I strongly suggest people try a product like this if they have a low nutrient system or an SPS type system. This is not for the person who doesn't even test their nitrates and phosphates and feeds their fish five times a day and has no corals. There's no need for this. There's other products you probably need for your tank right now. So I'm going to close by saying there's a lot of good products on the markets that are amino acids. ME Coral and ME Aminos is just one of them that's made differently than the others. Make sure it's appropriate for your tank based on your nutrient levels in your tank and customize a plan on how you can use it best in your tank. With that, we'll see you another day at ME Coral. Have fun.